welcome back to my channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Danielle and I am the owner of Dan Fancy Creations and the Drunk Flamingo Glitter. If you guys are new to my channel, I do want to let you know that you can catch my content in two other places. I have a large tutorial group on Facebook as well as a smaller, more personalized paid membership group where I offer exclusive content, group challenges, discount codes, and all sorts of fun stuff. If you guys want to check out those groups, I'm going to link them below for you guys. Today's tutorial is going to be car freshies. Um, I know I already have a tutorial on car freshies on my YouTube, but today's tutorial, we are going to be using the awesome molds from Nopalia Creek. Channing is the owner and she is amazing. She is super sweet and she has generously given our group and my followers a discount code that will also be linked in the description. Um, definitely go check out her group um, and her molds are awesome. Um, I think that they definitely just kind of help take freshies to the next level if these are something that you guys like doing. Um, it's just another option to offer your customers and honestly I'm probably never going to make another freshie with a metal cookie cutter again. Um, these freshies are super fun. They do have 3D elements so you can decorate them with um, oil base paint pens, um, glass crystals, and glitter of course. So today I am going to walk you guys through how I use all three of those elements to kind of elevate these car freshies. Um, I will also show you guys how I attach the string and the little bubble gum beads and all sorts of fun stuff. So if you guys are ready to see how to make these next level freshies, let's get started. All right guys, so if you have not seen the molds that we're going to be using today, this is what they look like. They are about five or six inches, so they are definitely um, probably about twice the size of the typical cookie cutter freshies that you see. These are just a few of the molds I have from Channing. I probably have about 20 of them because they're so fun. Now these aroma beads have been sitting for quite a while. Um, you do want to let your freshies cure for about 10 days before you pour them into your molds. And I do have a video showing how I mix them up, but I basically just add one ounce fragrance oil to six ounces of aroma beads. I shake them up really good and then just let them cure in the jar. And I do turn them up and down often so that all the aroma beads are coated in the oil and not just half of the beads get the fragrance absorbed. And your aroma beads should be dry before you add them to the molds to bake. If your aroma beads are still wet or sticking to the side of your jar, they are not ready to bake yet. And I would suggest adding maybe a tablespoon or two of aroma beads and shaking it up really good so that those extra beads can absorb um, the liquid that is still in the jar. And you can see mine, they basically look like just aroma beads you would take out of the package. They're very dry, they're not sticking together. And even if your beads are dry and not sticking to the jar after a few days, you still wanna let those beads sit and cure for at least another week. And you guys can see I am basically just pouring these freshies in and getting them in all of the little cracks and crevices. Um, molds that have little spaces like this, these horns or if there's, I don't know, random little <laughs> spots on your freshies. Um, you do want to make sure that your beads get into those little spaces so that there's not a gap or bubble or anything like that can, that can affect the look of your freshies. And I fill these molds up about three fourths of the way. Since they are much larger than your typical freshies, you don't necessarily have to fill them all the way to the top, but you do wanna make sure that they're filled enough so that um, they are a decent thickness. 
and they will bake down a little bit but I have found that about three-fourths of the way full um, gives you a nice good freshy and there's my bun for today one day maybe I'll not get my head in my tutorials but that day has not come yet And all of these freshies are the same scent. All right, so now that I have all my freshies divided up, I'm going to color them. I bet you thought I was gonna bake all of them clear, didn't you? So one of the bull skulls I am going to leave clear or white, just so I have a clean space to work on. And um, that way I can color him whatever color I want to. So now that I know that this circle freshie will take this many beads, I can take those beads and divide them between different cups and color each cup a different color so that way my freshie can be different colors. You will see what I mean in just a second. So I am going to color these aroma beads with mica i get them from different places um ccdiy has some um, i have some at the drunk flamingo uh, brambleberry has a good selection any mica you find should work well though and when we're going to color these aroma beads you do not need a ton of mica because if you use too much then the mica is going to rub off even after it's baked and you don't want the coloring coming off on your customers hands or anything like that we just want enough to color the beads so i'm just putting probably like a fourth of a teaspoon in here and this particular pink I'm not crazy about um, I do like the color of it but it is kind of chunky it's not as smooth as other micas that I've had I'm not really sure why but And the next color we're going to use is a light pink. This one is from CCDIY. I don't even know if I've used it in epoxy yet, but it's really pretty. It's a very light pink. So I'm just mixing these up really, really well. You want to make sure that all of the little beads are kind of coated in mica, but not too much mica. And the last color, I'm going to do just a little bit of purple. And I thought these colors would be good for like a sunset. That is what these freshies or this particular freshie is going to be. It's like a desert sunset. So this pink I am going to pour into another container and kind of shake off some of that mica. just so I don't get like clumps of mica 
baked into the fresh sheet as well. All right, so when we pour these into our freshie, we're not going to pour all of one color in there at a time because we want to make sure that they're kind of like layered properly so that they don't just kind of fall wherever. So I am just starting at the top. We're just going to pour a little bit of that purple and then we're going to pour a little bit of this pink right beside the purple. And then we're going to pour the hot pink right beside the light pink. And then we're going to go back and do a second layer of the purple, a second layer of the light pink, and then the same for the hot pink. This just helps you know, keep each aroma bead in the section that you want it in. And it also helps with ombre as well. If you want to get an ombre look. And the very bottom of this freshie is going to be covered with glitter anyway. So I don't really care what color it is. So I'm just going to pour the remaining beads into that bottom section. And then I'm just going to lightly pat them down so that they're all even and flat across the top. And that is how I get different colors. So I'm going to do the rest of these. If you guys wanna watch, um, I am going to speed it up a little bit So for these, we're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to dump the aroma beads that I already have measured out into a cup. And for this particular one, I'm just going to do two colors. We're going to do hot pink and light pink. So we're going to use the same two colors that we just used. This light pink from CC DIY and then hot pink from Brambleberry. This hot pink, I do have to mix up like super well just because it is kind of chunky. The light pink is a lot easier to kind of mix up and incorporate everything. So this one, we're just gonna ombre it kind of at an angle. So I'm pouring a little bit of this hot pink And then in the center, we're going to kind of mix those colors, the hot pink and the light pink. Sorry, my bun is in the way again. But in the center, I'm just kind of sprinkling each color just so it's a little bit of an ombre effect. And then we're just going to fill the rest of the way up. <laughs> and then we're just going to pat the aroma beads down. So for this cow freshie, we're just going to make him kind of beige. I don't really know how to jive up my little cow. I guess I could do crazy colors, but <laughs> I've really just been doing this beige and gold. So we're just mixing a little bit of this color. And we're going to pour all those beads in there. And now that these beads are going to stay in the freshie and are not going to be removed for color, I am really kind of cramming those aroma beads in his little horns. Like I did with the first little guy that we left white. 
And once you get all of your aroma beads in there and pat, pat it down how you want it, we're going to bake them in the oven. I bake them at 350 degrees for about 15 minutes. I will check them after 15 minutes and I will typically bake them for another two to three minutes. I always check them just to make sure that they're not over baked. And once we pull them out of the oven, this is what they look like. They are very, very hot. And I take a large nail that has a flat head on it and I really just go around the sides of my mold and kind of press those aroma beads down. This really helps to prevent any little spikes from poking up. That way you're not having to trim a whole lot after you demold them. So I am just poking or pushing, I guess, around the edges. And then I also take the nail and I will press down all over the freshy. This also helps kind of push those hot aroma beads down into any cracks and crevices. Now you don't want to force the beads down. We're just lightly kind of tapping on the back of it because if you press too hard, that can distort the image a little bit. And we don't want that to happen. We just want to try to fill any of those little cracks and crevices. So y'all can see I'm just like tapping all over the back of this freshie. And you want to do this while it's still very hot so that it will all kind of melt back into each other. If you do it when it's um, too cool, then it won't be warm enough to kind of melt. And it can be a little tricky to kind of get in those horns, but you can just do the best you can. <laughs> And after we have pressed down all these little aroma beads, we are going to let them dry completely. You don't want to try to demold them when they're still warm um, because, again, that can cause them to get distorted. So we're just going to let them sit here and cool. Another thing you can do, which I don't necessarily do a lot, but I know some people do, so I thought that I would share it with you guys is to press down some of these larger molds you can take a damp paper towel and just kind of press down in the center as well if you don't want to use the nail to do it but again you're not going to be pressing super hard we're just lightly kind of pressing on the back And yeah, then once you're happy with how your edges and your the back of your freshies look, we're just going to let them sit. And I will say sometimes after you do this, it will look like your freshies are overbaked, like they've melted too much, but they have not. It's just because we've distorted the back of them is why they look like that. And that is a way to know if your freshies are overbaked as if if you pull them out and you don't see any definition in the beads, then that means that they're overbaked. So once our freshies are totally cool, we can demold them. This is the little cow. Here's our desert landscape. 
this one is our mama one. Y'all can see all the 3D sections in it. And this is our little cactus bowl skull. This one does have a little pokies on it just because it was hard to kind of get that nail in there. So we're just gonna trim some of the little, little pieces off. And now we're going to decorate them. So when we're decorating our freshies, you want to use oil-based paint pens. They seem to work the best on freshies. Sometimes regular acrylic paint pens can repel. And the oil-based paint pens do not. I just grabbed these on Amazon. If you have a brand that you like, definitely use those. So I am basically just going to show you guys how I color in these different sections. And some of these can take a little bit of time. It really just depends on how detailed you want to go with them. I mean, clearly I went all out with these and applied crystals and glitter and paint pens and literally anything you can think of. But if you don't want to do that you definitely don't have to if you would rather just decorate them with some paint pens then they still look just as good So I am basically just going to let this play for you guys um, and hopefully you enjoy it. Okay, so now that I have got all of my car freshies painted that I wanted to paint, I'm going to go and glitter the other ones. So we're going to use Sparkling Sage and we're just going to use some Mod Podge. And I'm basically just going to go and apply the Mod Podge on any of like the little 3D hair elements that I see. And I'm just using my little silicone brush. I think I picked this up at Hobby Lobby. 
but they work well because you can just wipe it off and don't have to worry about ruining your Mod Podge or ruining your brushes with Mod Podge because I never remember to wash them out immediately after I use them. If I don't have a cup of water up here, then the brush will just be ruined. So we're basically just going to do this across the whole freshie. And some areas of this Mod Podge is going to be a little bit thicker than you would typically apply if you were doing this on a tumbler or something. Um, but I do let these sit for about 24 hours and then I brush off the glitter really, really well. And then I seal it with Rust-Oleum two times clear so that the glitter is all sealed in. and it doesn't flake off all over the customers when they open the bag. And the glitter does brush off pretty easily off of the freshy part. Alright, so Mr. Cow is done for now. So now we're going to do our next glittered freshie. These are new colors that I released on the Drunk Flamingo recently, so I thought they would be fun to use. I thought this purple went really good with the colors I chose for this freshie. This purple is Bella Luna. It's a really pretty like purple pink mix and it has stars in it, which is super fun. And I am just going to apply this glitter kind of on the, like the landscape part, the 3D landscape part on the freshie. So this one turned out super fun. I am going to go and bling the cactuses, cactus, cacti. So for this mama one, we are not going to add any glitter, but we are going to bling some parts of it. And if you guys are looking for new rhinestones, I do have them on the Drunk Flamingo. 
I just added some new colors recently. And I'm just going to use Liquid Fusion to apply these crystals. I use Liquid Fusion for pretty much everything I bling. There's very few things that I have to use like E6000 for or a different adhesive, but this one should work well. And I use my Crystal Katana to apply my crystals. There are similar options on Amazon that are a little bit more affordable. And I am basically just going to pick my crystals one by one and just apply them where I already applied the adhesive. I do work pretty quickly, so I just applied the adhesive everywhere that I wanted it. Um, if you know that you work a little bit slower, you may just want to apply it one section or one line at a time. Sorry, my head's in the way again. Um, but yes, I just put them on there and then I go back and adjust them if I need to before the adhesive dries. So the crystals I used around the circle were pink opal and the ones I'm using for the center are transparent AB. I did just add a mixed jar of transparent AB to the drunkflamingo.com if you guys don't have that color yet but want it. So I am just going down this lightning bolt and filling in all the little spaces. And after we get these crystals straightened out, this freshie will be finished. Well, almost finished before we go and add the beads and string. So I will just set this to the side and let it dry. And for this little guy, um, this was actually for a customer and they definitely wanted bling on here. So I decided to fill the horns with 
some of my, um, I think it's Aqua Bohemi, Bohemia maybe, and some Transparent AB. So I just filled his little horns with my liquid fusion. And then we're going to get to blinging. So I am speeding this up again, just a little bit more. Just so y'all aren't sitting here forever. Blinging can definitely take a little bit of time um, but it's something that I do really enjoy doing. It's actually what I started out. That was my craft of choice was blinging items. If you guys didn't know, I started out blinging um, car emblems, Uggs, um, makeup brushes, Nikes, you name it. I have probably blinged it. I've done coffee makers, tea kettles, like all sorts of crazy stuff. So even though it is time consuming, it is pretty relaxing for me. And now this guy is finished. And we're going to add some crystals to this cactus real quick. I'm just brushing off the glitter. And we're just going to apply the same adhesive, just some liquid fusion all over the cactus. And I am just using mixed sizes of the Crystal AB. I typically use SS16, 12, and 8 or 6. And that's usually around 2 millimeters to 4 millimeters. And even though it does have like the AB coating, um, you still see the underneath color through the crystal, so it has a really cool effect. And in case you guys didn't know, AB stands for Aurora Borealis, like the Northern Lights, because these particular crystals reflect all the colors just like the Northern Lights. And now that the crystals are on this guy, I am gonna go and seal the glitter with Mod Podge. If this did not have crystals on it, I would just seal it with a coat of Rust-Oleum two times. But since there are crystals on this freshie, I don't want the Rust-Oleum to dull the crystal shine. So I'm just sealing it with Mod Podge.
So these are finished and once all the adhesive and the Mod Podge and all that is dry, we will be ready for our next step. All right guys, so all of these freshies are dried, the adhesive is dried, the Mod Podge is dried. So we're ready to screw in our little eye hooks and um, string some beads for the hanging piece, I guess. I don't know what you would call it, a string. So I'm just taking these eye hooks. These are about one inch and I am just screwing them in. I screw them instead of heat them and just stick them in just because I want to make sure that these eye hooks are gripping the aroma beads instead of just sliding in. I feel like if you actually twist them in, they will have a better grip and they're more likely to hold firm even if the freshies warm up a little bit and not slide off of the hooks. So I am just pressing really hard as I turn and after the first few turns it does get easier um, to kind of twist them in really good. And everything I use, I will link in the description. These are just from Amazon. If you want to pick some up at your local hardware store, you can definitely do that as well. So once we have the eye hooks in, we're ready to get some beads out and our string, whatever you're going to use to string the beads. I am just using some really thin twine that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. And some bubblegum beads. These particular ones are also from Hobby Lobby. So here's the twine that I use. It's just very thin. Um, I would recommend purchasing it at a store just so you know how thick it is. I just found the thinnest that I could find. Um, if you would rather just use elastic, you can do that as well. But I just like the look of twine. So I'm just going to thread my eye hook, loop it around, and then pull it. And then we're just going to string a couple beads on each freshie. So I will do a couple of these normal speed just so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing and then I will speed up the last two. So I just kind of twist the twine just to kind of make it as thin as possible. And then we're just going to slowly kind of press it through the beads and some of your beads you will have to look some of them may have smaller holes um that particular bead i think it had some plastic in the way but you can just it, i would typically take my drill bit and actually just drill the little plastic out of there <laughs> I do find that the wooden beads that I use are easier to string. Sorry for the train in the background. It always comes every 15 minutes. And once I have as many beads as I want on there, I'm just going to make a knot at the very top of the last bead so that the beads kind of stay stationary and don't slide up and down the string. And then I also make a knot in the very top of the string. And I also don't necessarily cut my string a certain length. I really kind of provide 
more string than is probably necessary, but I do that just in case some customers like their um, freshies to hang lower. Some may like them to hang higher so they can adjust that when they get them. So I will show this last one in regular speed and then I will speed up the other two. I'm just going ahead and picking out the beads that I want for the other ones. And you guys can get beads on other places like Etsy, Amazon. Um, I just happened to be at Hobby Lobby and the beads that they had were 50% off. So I snagged a couple packages of them. So again, we're just going to string the string through the eye loop and then loop it. And then I will cut my ends if I need to, just to make them pretty tight. And I will sometimes, like this particular one, I found like a really thin part of the twine and I cut it there just to make it easier to string through Sometimes I do find that kind of twisting the string through the beads help. And then we're going to loop it and form a little knot at the very top of that last bead. And then we're going to loop it and make a knot at the very top. And now this one will be finished. So I'm going to let the other two play, but I am gonna speed it up a little bit. So the last two are gonna be sped up just a little bit, but I am going to let them play because I know a lot of you guys are visual learners and just like to watch me do things um, a few different times. But once we get the beads on, these freshies are basically ready to ship. I do ship mine in smell proof bags that I get from Amazon. I have a few different sizes, so I would just measure your freshies just to see what size bags you need. Um, I do also ship my freshies with a piece of parchment paper or butcher paper in between the freshie and the bag. That way the paint pens or the glitter things like that do not stick to the plastic of the bag and get removed when the customer is trying to take the freshie out of the package. I hope that makes sense. The paper just kind of acts like a barrier. But that's pretty much it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really think that adding the glitter and the crystals just really take your freshies to the next level. I think they just look so good um, versus just the regular cookie cutter, cookie cutter freshies. But definitely check out Channing if you haven't already. I am going to link all of her shop info and our discount code in the description below. But here are some finished pictures of all of the freshies. I think they turned out so good. If you guys get some molds and try this style of freshie, please post in the group because I love to see what you guys come up with. If y'all enjoyed this video or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my tutorial group on Facebook 
or our damn fancy tribe. Both are linked in the description. Thanks for watching.